So myth one is that humans are evolved to eat meat and that Paleolithic peoples consumed large quantities of meat. Humans have no known anatomical, physiological, or genetic adaptations to meat consumption. Quite the opposite, we have many adaptations to plant consumption. Take, for example, vitamin C. Carnivores can make their own vitamin C because vitamin C is found in plants. If you don't eat plants, you need to be able to make it yourself. We can't make it. We have to consume it from plants. We have a longer digestive tract than carnivores. That's because our food needs to stay in our bodies longer, so we have more time to digest plant matter. We need more surface area, we need more microbes. So we have big molars that are to, to shred fibrous plant tissue. We do not have carnassials, which are the specialized teeth that carnivores have to shred meat. And we do actually have some genetic mutations in some populations that are adaptive to animal consumption, but it's to milk, not meat. We know that humans had a mixed diet. Um, we can verify that in part by looking at modern humans that continue to hunt and gather foods, and we know that they have a very mixed diet. So things like honey are particularly important for people. Things like uh, starchy resources that come from underground are particularly important. For example, tubers and bulbs and corms, uh, these tissues that have a lot of starch and carbohydrates. Um, meat is important to an extent, but not as important as um, the popular media might lead you to believe. It's usually 25 percent or less of their diet, and it's very variable. They, it's unpredictable, it's hard to get, so humans tend to rely first and foremost on plant foods that they can find in the environment. Humans don't turn down sugars from fruits, of course. If they find a fruit, they can eat it, but um, fruits are not particularly reliable either. They're seasonal. Uh, the starches, the sugars that are um, kept in underground storage organs of plants are much more ubiquitous in the environment and much more reliable and are there pretty much year-round. Behaviorally, people are plastic and some people eat meat, but uh, anatomically I'd say we're not adapted to meat at all. Our, our teeth are too big, our enamel's too thick, the cusp on our teeth are too short. So we simply don't have the adaptations that uh, you would need to chew meat efficiently. I mean, anyone can look at the teeth of their dog or cat and they can see what teeth should look like if you're going to eat meat. Our teeth don't match. So. Uh, you could say that we've evolved uh, a face and a mouth that's uh, for eating something else that's not meat. And uh, most people believe that's plant foods. Eat. The, the idea that human beings should eat a lot of meat, to me, is, is a ludicrous statement. And I don't see how any scientist who was familiar with primate diets, primate physiology, and human diets and the actual composition of protein, fats, and carbohydrates and how they're metabolized in the body and so on, I do not say, see how they could make such a ridiculous statement. It is absolutely ridiculous. The brain does not run on protein. The body does not want to break down protein to get those glucose, you know, glucose-containing amino acids. It doesn't want to do it. Don't make me do it. Please don't make me do it. Fill me up with sugars and starches for, for your energy, and then protein can go to satisfy your requirements for nitrogen and amino acids and so on, and can take care of all of the body functions, because, of course, protein, you cannot store it. You have to eat it in your diet every single single day. And then fat has its certain functions in the body as well. And let each of those three macronutrients do what they're supposed to do and quit trying to force humans to eat one or the other and use them in a way that I believe is not compatible with human biology. I get very excited about this because I think it's so silly it's, it, and dangerous. I am not familiar with the latest modifications of the paleo diet. But if the paleo diets being advocated at present are stating that human beings should take most of their daily caloric substrate from meat foods, I would just say this is a ridiculous and ludicrous idea and statement. When we look at fossil sites like Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, we see bones eroding out of the ground, covered in the telltale scars of butchery, cut marks all over them. There's very little doubt that our ancestors ate meat millions of years ago. But we also have sites like Ohalo II on the Sea of Galilee in Israel. We have the wild ancestors of wheat and barley and rye. People were eating these 10,000 years before the origins of agriculture. 
During the, the, the peak of the last great ice age, there's nothing unnatural about gluten either. And in fact, when we look at Neanderthal teeth, we find buried deep within the tartar on those teeth, the little granules of starch of barley. All this despite the pervasive call today to cut carbs. The Hadza are unique, not because they're a Stone Age population, they're just as modern and contemporary as you and me, but because they live a life in the absence of agriculture and in the absence of permanent dwellings, which is much like the life that our ancestors lived. It turns out that men focus their foraging efforts on meat and honey, which makes up about 45% of the annual diet composition, the rest coming from plant foods, right? Surprise number one. Hadza men, women, and children alike rank honey as their number one preferred food item. So while Hadza men focus on meat and honey, and children focus on anything they can reliably collect, from berries to fruits to tubers to small game animals, women target plant foods. Women forage in groups, and they tend to focus on um, underground storage organs, tubers, which act as food and water reserves for the plant. And they can be sometimes buried two to three feet underground. They're a staple of the Hadza diet. They're available year-round. When they're not available, women focus on other foods. They focus a lot on fruits and berry species, many different types.